I'm finally releasing a pro version of Spec.io. I did the free version over a year ago. I've written a bunch of add-ons, worked in Blender, and you know, pretty much stuck with keeping this as my primary hobby. And uh, I'm finally at a point where I feel like I can support a pro version and start putting features into it that are worthy of the name. Uh, so I'm going to show that to you guys, and I hope that you agree that the time was right to you know, finally release this to people and start building on it. The first thing that you'll notice is that I've completely redone the interface. So when you first open it, it'll probably be uh, a little shortened like this. You just pull it out until you see the name and it's, you know, it'll work just fine. You don't even need to see the, same, the name just so that you know that, um, you know, it's a little wider than normal. And uh, we're going to start out by pulling in a file. Um, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on that file and you can see right away that it's got you know some of the usual things that Blender does to these things. I'm going to put it in material mode um, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit apply to selection for the stack action and let it go ahead and do that. All right. So just like the free version it will create these layers it will keep the um, it will keep all the hierarchy this is you know the main feature of what I provide over what's the uh, standard in blender uh, everything in the the hierarchy is preserved so that you can select things by their um, uh, layer the IDs are preserved you know it's just it's just organized the way that you organized your SVG file so if you had some kind of system for that, then it, it helps you do that. Next up, we have the selections. So if I select anything and I want to get the collection uh, that that's in, I can do that. This isn't just isolated to SVGs, but I found this uh, useful in messing around with these things. All right, so you know, collection. If I want to get something by the same material, I can quickly do that. And uh, someone did point out to me that this is available in regular Blender. I just didn't know how to do it, um, but I found this to be useful as well. Uh, on the topic of materials, there are a number of improvements in the reuse of materials. I've actually had a lot of problems getting the same material to be reused from the Blender import. And now you can see that it will share materials more often through several objects. Um, selecting curves. So I don't think this one has any curves. Let me. Um, uh, yeah, we'll just do it. new file. Now this has been a torture test of a file. Um, uh, browsers won't even render it correctly at all. All right, we're gonna go into this view here. Um, I'll go ahead and select everything just to be safe. Apply to selection. And you can see that we've got some transparent materials here, right? And that is something that, um, that the regular importer could not do. Uh, but actually the reason, main reason I opened this up is because this has a bunch of curves and curves because they have no thickness, you don't actually see the material on them. Plus I've seen some problems in adding the material to anything that didn't have a fill. So we've taken care of both of those things. We added the, uh, added the material to all of these and, um, and now we have the ability to hit curves and it's going to pick up all of these things that have no fill. We can choose the action to be fat and curved. Um, I've found that I need a pretty low value on this. And then apply, apply the action to selection. So all the functions that I've set up are meant to be this same pattern of uh, you select what you want, you either have these quick selections or big file selections, and then you pick an action and you apply it. You, you, actions will have their details and then you apply it. 
Um, the selections also work in a reverse mode for a deselect or a you know a sub selection. Um, so right now we've got um, we've got nothing selected. We're going to hit random, and random is going to grab random things. You know, it didn't grab everything. Um, now that things are selected, and you can see individual letters are selected. Now that things are selected, when I hit random again, it's going to randomly deselect and randomly deselect and randomly deselect. Uh, I just find this useful um, in, in playing around with stuff. It's not always do you have a, you want to get regular selections. Um, if we did stuff like before, we grab things by material. Uh, this one's not going to have a lot of same materials because of the, the source file is pretty crazy um, but if you any way that you select things if you can always do the random deselect on, on it um, and then if we grab shapes it's the opposite of curves so shapes are anything that have a fill uh, they're curves with a fill All right so that covers the selections and then uh, the actions one of the cool new features that we've got in the pro version that will stay in the pro version is the ability to place 3d objects on your uh, anything that you have selected so i'm going to select some, something that has multiple items here we'll go around the entire collection you can see we've got all these shapes i'm going to choose my object and then apply to selection and you can see that it took the object, used its origin, placed it on the origin of the current objects. But one of the coolest things is that it did it with the orientation set to the orientation of the selected objects. So um, we could do this for a number of different things. I'm going to go ahead and put some cubes on those windows. I don't have to worry about how big it is or anything to much extent, right? So because it's going to rescale it as well. I'm going to select one of these. Oh, that's a pretty small collection of happened. Oh, I'm going to select it by material and just grab all of them. All right, and then place, and we will select the cube and apply. Uh, and we'll zoom in, and you can see that it scaled them and placed them all there. So this was my one of my original visions. I wanted to be able to take a 2D file that I created with an iPad uh, from an SVG and then be able to use that to very accurately lay out something. So if I wanted to do even a landscape or something, I could quickly do that from an imported SVG file with real 3D objects. Um, so I'm pretty excited about this feature. That's all the major features I wanted to show to you guys today. Uh, I do plan to add more to this, maybe monthly, maybe quarterly. And we are keeping the discussion alive on Discord. I'm very active on there. If you have a issue, you have a feature request, anything, uh, I encourage you to show up there and let me know. If you want to send me any files to try out, figure out what's going on, or add features from uh, trying to import, uh, bring it on. I welcome the challenge and anything that you uh, feel will help you will probably help others and that's one of the motivators I have to keep this going. So hope to see you guys online and I hope the product works out great for you. See ya.